In the U.S. longline fisheries, a number of marine turtles are incidentally captured every year. With the collaboration of fishermen, different mitigation measures have been tested and are now in place, greatly reducing the number of captured turtles. However, there are still a number of turtles that get incidentally caught by longline fisheries every year. These animals tend to be alive when found, and can, if treated properly, survive the interaction. In order to maximize the animal's chances of survival after the interaction, fishers should know and apply the best handling, hook removing, and release techniques. This short training video describes the basic anatomy and physiology of sea turtles, and how it applies when handling these animals. It also recommends the best methods for removing hooks, depending on different factors and how to use the recommended tools. Before we go through hook removing techniques, Let's have a look at the best handling techniques for sea turtles. These apply mostly to small to medium-sized hard-shelled turtles, since large adult hard-shelled turtles and leatherbacks are usually too large to bring on board. If the animal is a reasonable size and the sea conditions allow, the best option is to haul the captured turtle on board the vessel for de-hooking. Never do so by pulling the line. If the animal is hauled by pulling the line, the hook and its lodging point will bear the animal's weight, probably resulting in tears of the tissues and increased internal injuries, like the one you can see here in the open throat of a dead turtle. You will probably remove the hook and the animal will be released alive and apparently strong, but it will die after a few days due to a severe infection. Therefore, always haul a turtle on board with a dip net. If you are going to haul sea turtles on board, this is an essential piece of equipment that you need to carry with you on the fishing vessel. If the vessel is not very high, you might be able to reach the turtle with your hands. Or you might want to use a different type of net, like this one developed by fishermen in Costa Rica. Once on board, you can carry a turtle by holding the sides of the carapace, or with one hand holding the front end, right behind the neck, and the other one holding the back end of the carapace. The turtle cannot reach to bite the hand on the back of its neck, so this is a safe position. For larger turtles, two people can hold them using this same technique. It is not recommended to grab a sea turtle by its flippers, especially younger animals. Because they do not have to bear much weight, Turtles do not have tight, strong joints as land mammals do. These images show radiographs of an elbow of a human and a dog. The lighter areas represent bone, while the darker areas represent soft tissue, like muscles, tendons, or ligaments. You can see that, unlike stronger joints in land mammals, in sea turtles, there is a larger separation between the bones, making the joint weaker. The same picture can be seen at the shoulder, comparing the radiographs of a human, a cat, and a sea turtle. For this reason, it is not recommended to hold a turtle by its flippers unless necessary. If you have to do it, hold the flippers as close to the armpit as possible, or have someone, or something, bearing part of the animal's weight by supporting the back end of the turtle. The easiest way to control a sea turtle while on board is by placing it on a tire, preventing it from moving around, if you do not have a tire, a coiled up rope is another good option. If a turtle becomes agitated and moves too much, it can be calmed down by placing a hand over its head, not over its eyes, lightly pressing down. The animal will slowly drop its head and stretch its neck. When the neck is fully stretched, this triggers a nervous reflex that relaxes the animal, which can last for several minutes. However, any noise or sudden movement will wake up the animal again. Not all turtles respond well to this reflex, but in general, it is very effective. To open a turtle's mouth, it tends to be very effective to place the thumb and the index finger at both sides of the nose, without closing the nostrils. This immediately triggers the opening of the turtle's mouth, making it possible to examine the inside of the mouth. or to insert a mouth gag to keep the mouth open for hook removal.
If the turtle is too large to be hauled on board, or if the sea conditions do not allow it, it is of paramount importance to at least cut the line as short as possible in all instances. By far, the most dangerous and lethal part of the longline gear is the line. Therefore, if you are not going to haul turtles on board, you should always have a long-handled line cutter to cut the trailing line as short as possible. Two situations might arise if the line is left long. If the line entangles the animal, it will cut off the blood supply to the flipper. With time, gangrene or death of flipper tissues occur. And finally, the flipper gets amputated. In the worst case, if the blood supply is not completely cut, this gangrene and infection of the flipper will spread to the turtle's body, causing generalized infection and death after weeks. Therefore, entangled animals need to be disentangled as soon as possible, so that injuries do not worsen. This can be done with the animal still in the water with a knife or long-handled line cutter, or lifting it on board with a net. In hooked turtles, if the hook is not removed and the animal is released with a long piece of line attached to the hook, then it is quite possible that the turtle will eventually swallow the line. If so, while the hook is attached to the mouth or the esophagus, the line gets swallowed and transits along the digestive tract, eventually exiting through the cloaca. The movements of the digestive system continue to pull the line while the hook is still stuck in the mouth or esophagus, and pulls from the other side, tightening the line as a guitar string. The digestive system is forced to fold around the line, as you can see in these images. This results in an extremely severe injury of the digestive system, which ends up being cut by the line, causing death of the animal after weeks of pain and agony. In this picture, you can see a piece of intestine cut by a line. The yellow tissue is fibrin, a sign of chronic injury of the wall of the intestine. Therefore, when a hook cannot be removed, wherever it is, and even if the animal is still in the water, always try to cut as much of the attached line as possible. With the animal still in the water, you can also attempt to remove the hook using adequate long-handled de-hooking tools, especially if it is external. In any case, Stop after two or three attempts, as you will probably be causing more harm than good if the hook does not come off easily. If the hook is deeper in the mouth or swallowed, and you cannot see it well, do not try to remove it unless you bring the turtle on board. Now that you are more confident handling sea turtles, let's have a look at the best de-hooking techniques. It is difficult to recommend one single way of removing a hook. Here, we can only provide the knowledge for fishermen to adapt to each particular situation and to decide the most adequate option in each case. If at all possible, the best way to remove any hook if the point and barb are showing through a new hole, independent of the location, is by cutting it with bolt cutters, removing the point and barb on one side and the shank on the other side. If it is impossible to cut the hook, the next best option is to cut all the line from the eye of the hook and then to pull the hook by the point through the new hole instead of going backwards. However, if it is possible to flatten the barb of the hook or even to cut it, then a better option would be to do that and then remove the hook backwards the way it came in. If the hook is lodged and the point and barb are embedded, one possible option might be to push the hook enough to show the point and barb through a new hole and then to cut it. If this is not possible, then the hook has to be removed backwards with a movement opposite to how it entered. If it is a J hook, this can be done using the J style D hooker, pulling the hook with a quick, strong movement, or with the pigtail or Scotty's D hooker, twisting and pushing the hook instead of pulling it. If it is a circle hook, then the hook has to be rotated first, so that only the point and barb are left inside the tissues. 
Then, holding the hook by the curve with the J-style de-hooker, a strong and sudden pull is given so that the point and barb come out. So, if we have a sea turtle on board, when is it better to remove a hook and when is it better to leave it? This mostly depends on the location of the hook. If it is an external hook, it is easy enough to remove it, especially if we can cut it, and you should always try to do so. However, if the operation gets complicated for any reason, for example, you do not have the tools, the sea is very rough and it is difficult to work, the animal cannot be hauled on board, then it is probably better to leave the hook in place, as insisting might cause further injuries to the animal. If a hook is swallowed, then it is probably a good decision to leave it in place. The esophagus in sea turtles is very strong, with a thick muscular wall, as you can see in this image of a turtle's neck cut in half. If the handling is correct, and the turtle is not lifted on board by pulling the line, and the line is cut as short as possible, then a hook lodged in the esophagus will not necessarily cause any severe injuries. If you try to remove a swallowed hook, you are probably causing further injuries and reducing the probabilities of the animal to survive after the interaction. If the hook is in the mouth of the turtle, then the best option is to try to remove it. Unlike in the esophagus, some structures in the mouth of sea turtles are fragile and more sensitive to secondary infections. This is the case of the glottis, the tongue, or the corner of the mouth. The glottis is right behind the tongue, a small elongated slit, point of entry to the lower respiratory system. This cartilaginous structure completely isolates the respiratory system, allowing the air to enter into the lungs when the animal breathes. If at any point, due to damage of the glottis, water can get in, it would reach the lungs, resulting in infection or pneumonia, and eventually death of the animal. Damaging this structure is relatively easy if one is not careful during removal of hooks located in this area or right behind it, like in this picture. Therefore, during hook extraction, always be aware of the location of the point of the hook. Always try to direct the point of the hook towards the sides of the mouth and never towards the center where it can damage the glottis. The commissure of the mouth is where the mandible bone and the joint between mandible and maxilla are located. A deep hooking here, together with an incorrect removal technique, which provokes severe injuries, might end up causing extensive infection and the death of the animal months later. The removal of the hook will be done depending on factors such as its exact location, how deep in the flesh the hook is, available tools, etc. If at all possible, it is always easiest to try and cut the hook before removal. Remember to always cut the line as short as possible if you cannot remove the hook. We will end this presentation with some tips on how to deal with semi-comatose turtles that have spent too long under the water. The lungs and sea turtles are located in the dorsal area, right underneath the carapace. Underneath them are located the rest of the organs, like the stomach, the liver, the spleen, or the intestines, without a diaphragm separating them from the lungs, as happens in mammals. In this CT scan image, we can see the darker areas belonging to the lungs, full of air, over a gray-white area belonging to the viscerae. When a turtle is placed on its carapace, all the organs fall over the lungs, putting pressure on them. While this position does not prevent a healthy turtle from breathing, it does make it difficult. In the case of half-drowned, weak, or comatose animals, this position can severely compromise breathing, making the recovery of the animal longer or impossible. Therefore, always place a semi-comatose turtle on its belly, with the hindquarters slightly more elevated than the head to let the lungs drain off the water inside them. If you have time during or after operations, there is a simple CPR technique that can be applied to these animals to speed up recovery. Fully extend the flippers in front of the animal, and then move the flippers to the back. Extending the flippers to the front expands the lungs, favoring the entry of new air. Moving the flippers to the back contracts the lungs, forcing the air out of the lungs. Repeat this five to seven times. Then, fold the front flippers on both sides of the turtle's neck, and press five to seven times with quick and strong movements on the joint of the flipper closer to the head. 
This favors water coming out of the lungs and stimulates the blood circulation. You can repeat this procedure for as long as you can until the animal regains strength and starts breathing on its own. If you are busy, you can do this just once or twice, leave the animal, and come back later. To release a sea turtle, always remember to stop the engine of the vessel and make sure there is no fishing gear in the water. Let go of the turtle head first from the lowest point of the vessel. With the techniques explained in this video, if you are careful, the chances of the turtle surviving the interaction with the longline gear are high, and you will have helped towards the conservation of these important animals.